Lab Guy here. It's been a while since I posted a video. Apologies for that. I got very low response on the last video and so I devoted my uh, attention to other things that I had to do that had higher priorities. So hopefully today I'm back. So um, I noticed that I have uh, attained many new subscribers since the last video. Welcome! Thank you for uh, subscribing to my channel. I hope you like it. Um, today we're going to uh, look at color matrixing or how RGB is matrixed into the signals called Y, U, and V which are the jacks you may have noticed on the back of your DVD player. I'm not going to go into incredible detail um, and the system that I will talk about is not necessarily the real-world numbers that are used. It, of course, varies from system to system depending on a lot of uh, actual engineering factors. Uh, but I'm going to, um, to uh, use generic numbers and show you how the process works. My friend Troy Walters of Troy's Visual Arts is constructing a two-color color television using two CRTs and the red-orange cyan-magenta system. So he is uh, attempting to copy my color matrix circuit and is encountering some difficulties. So first in this video I'm going to cover the theory of the color matrix uh, going from red, green, and blue to YUV and then going from YUV back to red, green, and blue. In a later video, I will cover the actual circuitry of my color matrix for my tiny Trinoscope TV, which is the one that Troy is uh, copying. So now let's uh, look at the uh, process involved. In 1950 or so, in the United States, uh, it was proposed uh, to produce a compatible color television system. What that means is that the color television signal had to be able to be received by a black and white television and produce a black and white picture from the color signal and consequently a color television could receive a standard black and white signal and produce a black and white picture normally and of course a color television would make a color picture with a color signal. So to make that work, they came up with a very clever way of mixing the red, green, and blue signals representing the tricolor stimulus of the human eye as it was understood at the time uh, in, a, in such a manner that uh, it was matrixed together in a way to reduce the amount of information that they had to transmit. For instance, if a color camera is looking at a black and white scene, like say you're holding up a uh, black and white photograph in front of a color television camera, the color channels will actually output zero because there is no color in that picture. It's only black, gray, or white. So that signal representing just the black and white part is called Y. And that is the signal that a black and white television receives from a color broadcast to make a black and white picture. So we start there. We have a color television camera which consists of essentially, literally, three black and white television cameras. There's an optical system that divides the image into three identical copies and passes them through red, green, and blue filters. Otherwise, these cameras produce black and white signals coming out, but each signal represents the amount of that color in the scene. The range, the, these are calibrated to produce zero to one volt. Zero volts is black, one volt is saturated white like this background, and anything in between is a, is a shade of gray. A low, very low voltage is a dark shade of gray and a higher voltage is a brighter shade of gray. Now, <clears throat> to, pro 
to take these three signals and create the equivalent of the black and white signal, we scale them, that is we multiply them by a fraction, and these were worked out to uh, represent white light to the human eye, and we take the red signal and multiply it times 0.3, and we take the green signal and multiply it by 0.59, and we take the blue signal and multiply it by 0.11. We add the three signals together to generate the black and white signal called Y, which again has returned to a level of 1 volt, 0 to 1 volt. If you'll note, these coefficients add up to 1. So that is how the luminance signal is created and if you're looking at the back of your DVD player, you'll notice that you have a jack labeled Y. That is this signal, the black and white signal. If you just plug that into a color TV, into the composite video input of a color TV, you will get a beautiful black and white picture. In the next stage of the process, we generate two color difference signals. They're called different signals because we are subtracting. The way we subtract in electronics is we take one signal and invert it. So where this Y signal was originally 0 to plus 1 volt, it is now 0 to minus 1 volt. So when we add it, it's exactly like subtracting it. So we bring in our 1 volt red signal, and we subtract it. We subtract Y from it and we get R minus Y. We do the exact same thing with the blue signal, which is 0 to 1 volt. We subtract the Y signal from B, and we get B minus Y. Now, what has happened here is that the range that of output voltage has changed. In the case of the R minus Y signal, it has a range of uh, minus 0.7 volts to plus 0.7 volts, or it's plus and minus 0.7 volts for a total range of 1.4 volts. So it's, it's gotten larger. The same has happened to the B minus Y, which has a range of plus and minus 0.89 volts for a total of 1.78 volts. This is normal. This is, this is correct. In NTSC and in PAL, these two signals would now proceed to two RF balanced modulators where they would be mixed with a radio-like signal added together to produce what's called a quadrature modulation signal. Remember I mentioned that for monochrome images, like a grayscale picture in front of the color camera, these two signals will equal zero volts. In the case of the color TV signal, when that case occurred, then the radio modulators were unmodulated, there was no radio signal, and only the monochrome Y signal went through, and so your color television was not sending color signals uh, to the CRT when there was no color present in the picture. This way they kept the noise that would be in the color channels out of the black and white picture. Otherwise, the black and white picture would be full of color snow. So this was how they prevented color noise from appearing in the black and white picture on a color TV. Very clever. So, now, moving to the modern world where we get digital, we run into a slight problem here. Um, these signals would normally go to analog to digital converters. Let's consider the case of an 8-bit analog to digital converter. Standard converters convert either 0 to 1 volt or 0 to 2 volts in some cases, or they can convert plus and minus 1 volt or plus and minus a half a volt. So what we need to do the, the, for the color signals is since they're bigger than one volt, we want to scale those down again to be a range of plus and minus a half a volt each. 
so that they're the same size. They're all one volt. The Y signal's already one volt, so it's okay to send to a converter. So what we're talking about is our channel size. Our signal is this big, and our channel size is like this, so we don't want to clip our signal. So what we do is we shrink it so that it fits in the channel. At the receiving end of this, where it comes back out and it's at the scale of the channel, we will boost it back up to these levels. All right, so we're going to convert the R minus Y from 1.4 volts range to a 1 volt range. And we're going to do the same thing to the B minus Y. We're going to convert it to a 1 volt range. So the R minus Y signal coming in with its 1.4 volt amplitude is multiplied by 0.7143 to reduce it to 1 volt or plus and minus a half a volt. B minus Y comes in at 1.78 volts or plus and minus 0.89. We multiply it by 0.5618 which reduces it to plus and minus a half a volt or 1 volt. And now the Y is 0 to 1 volt. V, which represents R minus Y, is the scaled R minus Y that fits in a 1 volt channel. U is the scaled B minus Y that fits in a 1 volt channel. That is the only difference between y, uh, U and V and R minus Y and B minus Y is their scale. Otherwise the signals are still identical, they're just a slightly different size. And that completes the encoding end of the process. If you had a camera like this and it had U, uh, y, U, and V jack on the back, these are the voltage levels you would see at those jacks. So now let's look at how we undo the whole process. So going the other way, V comes in, plus and minus a half a volt. We multiply it times the reciprocal of the original value of 0.7143, 1 over 7. 0.7143 is 1.4 times, so we boost it back up to 1.4 volts. The same for the 1 volt U signal, we multiply it by 1.78, back up to 1.78 volts, or plus and minus 0.89 volts. Now, R minus Y and B minus Y are scaled again so that we can now do the reverse matrix to go back to RGB. So here is the final stage of the matrix. We enter it with our 1 volt Y signal, our level restored R minus Y at 1.4 volts, our level restored B minus Y at 1.78 volts. We then take the Y signal and we add it to the R minus Y. Algebraically, the minus y and the plus y cancel, leaving us with just r, or red. The same thing happens with b minus y. We add the y to the b minus y. The y's cancel. We're left with blue. We then take the red signal and we multiply it times minus 0.3. Remember to make y, we added 0.3 red to 0.11 blue and 0.59 green. So now we need to take out the 0.3 red from the Y signal, take out the 0.11 blue from the Y signal, and we do that by inverting them and scaling them so that we're left with just the 0.59 green. Now red is already the correct level of 0 to 1 volt, blue is already 0 to 1 volt, so they go th that, those two signals go through an amplifier of times one. These are just buffer amplifiers. The green is a little bit low, so we multiply it times the reciprocal of 0.59, which is 1.7, and green is restored to 0 to 1 volt. And that is how the matrix undoes what the camera does. And you get out red, green, and blue video again. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button please. If you didn't like the video, 
uh, leave a comment and tell us why you don't like it. I know this is a very basic video and it's intended for people who have no idea how this is done. So, this is not your college degree level training. Like I said, if you like it, thumbs up and so on. If you know people who like this kind of stuff, send them to my channel. I always like to have people watch my videos. So until next time, this is Lab Guy out.